The project actually started maybe um, a little bit more than a year ago. And uh, Sara Pincini, I was at that time in Paris in, a, in, a, in the Cité des Arts. Maybe you have heard of that. This is like a residency space for you know, like uh, artists that try to kind of do works. And so they visited me and um, then they proposed me, uh, do you want to do a project with us? And then they proposed me to do a, like to do an exhibition here. But actually they were like, do you want to do a giant painting? <laughs> like, like over the whole wall, you know? The, yeah. I don't know if you have ever seen this space in, in another occasion. Um, usually, like, usually it's like an empty space. Okay. And, uh, yeah, they asked me just to do a, a maybe seven or eight meter painting. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, eight meter painting. I never did this. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, ah, oh, maybe I, I want to do a, a real exhibition, not just one painting, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was actually quite scared about, well, not scared, but I had the respect uh, of this space because as you can see, well, he, now we changed the space so you cannot really see it, but the, the ceiling is quite low, it's, on, it's only three meters, and you have these really dominant uh, um, windows. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, wow, to put some paintings with these windows, and this is almost like a film because there are like always people and, um, and birds and gardeners, like, you know, there's always going something on. So I thought, it's kind of concurrence, uh, so I should kind of think how to use this, uh, these windows. And then, as, as I work quite differently on, on drawings, on paintings, on, and now I even did some sculpture, I thought, ah, maybe I can, I can create different spaces with different identities to, to put the works in in a in, in an accurate situation where you can really have a, a different a diverse approach to it. So I don't know. You had to look a little bit from outside. So you have these pigeons there. Yes, <laughs> we saw them. So they kind of the thing. Yeah. It's like the, the beginning, and you see this uh, plexiglass um, paintings. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yeah. In, you can imagine maybe in at night they they look completely different because we put some lights on it and and then they kind of shine as a screen at at night. Yeah, because now it seems like that you can see behind and right. Yeah, I mean it, it's you know it's it, now it's more like you can even look through it and you see the trees, so it looks almost like as they would come from the world and into the exhibition. And if you're outside, you have the impression they kind of come from the exhibition to the world. Yeah. <laughs> so this was a bit the idea to, to create a space where somehow the park is also an exhibition space. And here it's also a park. So the pigeons, they will appear again and again uh, through this parkour. Um, yeah. That, that, I thought that could be interesting to, to really use these windows in a, in a kind of useful way to include it into the exhibition. And then maybe I say something to these soldiers, because I mean, you probably saw that these are soldiers. They are not really normal, they are musicians. And you, you know maybe there's this uh, military band, Fanfare en Francais. And, um, um, I think it's kind of interesting to think the military through this, this military band because it's so strange. I mean, why has a military a music band? But if you think a bit further, it's quite logic actually. Because I thought then, I mean, we can say music is like art, it's creativity, emotional, uh, and actually, you probably only can take people together that don't know each other through something emotional, through music, for example, through a game. And then I thought, ah, it's, you, you kind of have to play together something to kind of create a unity, to 
to after do something else that you would probably never do when you don't have this unity. So you, you have to learn war as a game to really do it afterwards because otherwise you would never kill someone, I guess. I don't know. But, and so to think this now with this situation that we have in Europe through this military music, I think we, we can maybe imagine more this, this power, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, how military can function out of our perspective, because we don't really know what's happening there. I, I, would, I think it's, it's kind of strange if, if, I take, if I would take some press photographs of the Ukraine and all this and then kind of interpret in my work. But this was really like a, a way how I could access to this topic and maybe also to show something that the visitors here in this exhibition can attach to because the other images we know them already mm -hmm. but this is I create here images that that speak about it in in a way in, sti in still a very imaginary way so it, it, yeah and so also this kind of nude soldiers to speak about actually they're al always in uniforms but they are a very solitude they're really alone actually in this military circles because they are unity but only through this music or only through the uniform only through this uh, march music rhythm but actually finally you know they're they're there with their body and here there with with their face and he even the chief the tambour major even he is kind of a ridiculous uh, a uh, person that only has his power through his uh, through his bars on on the shoulders. Otherwise, he's like no one. <laughs> so I, I want to play also about this irony, also this masculinity, this powerful masculinity through the its its uh, hierarchy. But actually, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's also, maybe you know the, the works of Baselitz, the Hilden. You know this, um, and he painted them after the Second World War, like the, these soldiers coming back from the, the war. And so, but he is like, he has really this masculine attitude of painting. He takes a lot of color, he flash, flash, flash. And I kind of try to cite him, but also to show, hey, come on, this virile painting, uh, pff, is it really, I, I don't want to, it's like a, also a parody of his uh, attitude of painting somehow. And this as well, that's why, I mean, they are huge, but you can see through. I mean, <laughs> he's, like you could see this is maybe, maybe a basilic gesture, but actually you can see through, it's, it's, it's transparent, it's, it's nothing. <laughs> so I wanted to create here this space where also as a spectator, you're almost like the windows. You, you, people look at you, you're transparent, you're, everybody looks at you. It's not really comfortable because you, you maybe want to look here on this drawing, but you know maybe some people having an upper and observing you in your back. So you're actually, okay, now let's, let's go here to a more intimate space. Here it's, it's white. Here is, here's no, no one is like observing, no one. Here we are more in this normal white cube, secure situation. Maybe have a look first <laughs> before I <laughs> take over your ideas. <laughs> project? Are they like all on the Berlin Green project? Um, yeah, that's uh, the, 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 the exhibition title, but each work has a title. So as you can see, they are in German, and then there's the, the English um, translation. And I, I put these titles always kind of very uh, descriptive. And I, I kind of like this because, especially in German, I don't know if someone speaks German here, um, somehow, 
sometimes these this really descriptive um, words, they turn into a strange uh, poesy, uh, poetry, poetry yeah? where they kind of sound and evoke a new image. And so then you suddenly have like th the image you see and the image you have in, in your own mind and they start to play with, with each other. And sometimes you can kind of provoke something. Um, yeah, let's, let's go back from, we, we came from these soldiers and we know also that, I mean, they're like in, in somewhere in the wilderness, let's say like this, but we know also that behind every soldier there, is, there are other people. They're like families probably or uh, partners or, so I, as this, uh, the family topic is, is, some, is a theme that I, I was quite occupied since uh, maybe two, three years. Uh, I thought this, this could be a, a nice uh, second space. And of course this space had to be more intimate and more uh, calm somehow. To really also, that it's possible to kind of look at it in a way where you have the time also to mirror yourself in, in that situation. And th this is also the, the reason why these persons, you can easily see that these are not persons that, let's say, exist in our world. They, they are somehow, uh, they take a place where we as spectators can imagine ourselves. So, you, you know maybe this uh, kind of therapy, uh, in German we call it Familienaufstellung. This is a kind of therapy. Constellation. Const constellation, exactly. So you, you go, uh, you maybe know, know better about it. About yeah, <laughs> it. <laughs> so what I understood and what I've thought was interesting is that you go to a place and you have kind of an experienced person and you, you speak about uh, your family and then these persons, places, like all these people that take part of this, this uh, event or this course, th th this person plays each person on a place like as, as a member of your family. So you would maybe be my mother or my father, whatever. And then maybe they, they, the person says, ah, oh, now go a bit closer, or no, even closer. And this could maybe evoke something on me because I was never so close to my mother. And this can maybe, uh, I can maybe learn something about my relation to my mother because I do this experience, although you're not at all my mother. So I thought a lot about kind of this, uh, placing um, people together and to, to think about the, the space between them, the gesture, the, the, the sight, and try to create like, yeah, relations somehow. And if you look at, uh, at this painting, here I, I precisely thought about like the, the modern patchwork family you could maybe imagine that this person, the principal person in the middle, this could be a mother or a father taking his or her child for the weekend. And he or she has to pick it up at its family, like its other family, its ex-wife, ex-husband family. And you have kind of this situation where, where the, the child will change home. And like the, these other members of the family just wait that this scene gets over. But there's so much tension. You can, you can feel that there's tension between the ex-mother and father, but they kind of want to try to make it convenient for the child, but they can't. So you have this that moment where everybody is just waiting that this gets over, but it, it, it uh, <laughs> take so much time to just bind these shoes because, <laughs> I mean, they are nervous, I don't know, whatever. But, uh, and then you can also see the symbolic uh, language with this uh, Botticelli 
uh, shallow and the fish, which is also a very um, Christian symbol, but there's just the head, so and I don't know, they want to, they just want to eat actually, and they wait that they finally can eat this head of this fish. And what I also thought about this, what is kind of particular is this uh, um, perspective in this painting. Normally you would have like straight uh, walls or like coins, but I, I decided to make it kind of the view, that the viewer is high and looking down to this painting, even down to this uh, landscape. And I thought about this could be an observing camera as we have up there and everywhere in this building. And then you can even go farther, it could be God. It could be God looking uh, on this uh, broken Christian family structure. Another question. Yeah? Sure. So the question is about this painting. Um, I, I think it's really interesting. But most importantly, like there's a repetition of this character in the TV. What, what were you thinking when you were creating this piece? I think it's, uh, well, first of all, it's also funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, because you don't see it at the first moment, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm really glad that you see it because some people don't even see it. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think it's, it's uh, all about this, uh, this uh, thought through, this uh, observing camera, this, this also this power of the spectator to think uh, what actually, how is the spectator looking at the painting? and to give him a, a view that is maybe not used, or the, to, to put the, the, the spectator into a view that is kind of a, a modern view, this observing, we are observed everywhere. And I, I kind of think that that, that could be a, a new way to look, to look, and why not paint, why shouldn't I paint this new view? Because, I mean, I want to do a contemporary view uh, and yeah this is a possibility to to change a view on on intimacy also yeah i think it's interesting because like even with the person staying there i don't know is that representative of a family member like an older family member because it feels like it's a constant circle where it it feels like it's a loop of a mental prison so this person is here, but this other person is still watching the person's life. So it's like that constant recycling of things. I mean, at least to me. So I, I guess I really wanted to know what we're thinking. That's interesting. Well, I think you, well, <laughs> I think you pretty much got what I thought. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Nice. It's, uh, nice. Nice. To. Okay. Yeah, I think you. It's enough. <laughs> you, think, you can think your own. I mean, this is the this is the the way I I, th I thought this worked. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, I don't know if you have other statements or something. Then it's maybe more interesting to react on you than just always. It's like maybe the six or seven tour I do, so it's a bit dangerous to get into this, uh, you know, <laughs> explanations. Uh, Talking about the bodies as without really defining the gender. Yeah. So have you chosen to represent them both for this? Like why did you choose to represent the majority of your figures with both hands? With both? Both, like without Ah, hands. with those. Um, I think it's it's uh, it's like the the same reason the I think it's not so important to to have this hair to to have an, to imagine ourselves in it. I mean, hair is very, gif we are so used to use hair as fashion, so we are also very used to interpret it as fashion. So, it can easily disturb what I actually want to say with this body. Sometimes I, I yeah, I, I mean, these rules are also here to break. That's why I put uh, clothes there. That's why their hair is. Th that's why there is a 
very clear penis on, on that painting, but also to question like really the man, like the yeah masculinity. But as uh, also here, I use clothes. I try to use clothes really neutral to more have a, maybe let's say a painting to have more possibility with color to, to really paint but to keep it I mean we cannot say if it's like an ancient clothes this is very modern is it feminine masculine it could be anything but it's like nice and it still gives an emotion to this character yeah. I catches attention to the to their eyes I yeah, this as well. Yeah. Because I mean, imagine if I did them all with this uh, really uh, skin color, then the skin and the nakedness would be more important. And in this family structure, it would destroy kind of the relations they have with each other because it doesn't make sense that the whole family is naked on the table. I mean, <laughs> then suddenly this topic gets more important than what I actually wanted to say. That's why I needed really this, uh, this clothes to make it calmer, to really speak about the sides, the these tensions. Uh, I mean, the person in the middle is the only person that looks in the camera, looks in our eyes. The others, they are like, really occupied with this uh, tension in, in the, in the, with each other. And just to add about the eye thing, like I noticed that in most of your works, like there's always a character, like it feels like the character is calling out for help, like it's always in the eyes. Mm -hmm. Is that deliberate for you? And why is that so important for you? No, no, I think I want to confront uh, the, us. I really want to interact, interact with us. I want to. Uh, almost like performative confrontation. I don't want to do just a nice object and I really want that here, like if you look here, that here some, in these two meters, that here is some energy and that we are like obliged to confront us with this situation and that is not at all kind of a decoration of, an, of a space. This I like generally in art also, if I'm like, it's, it's kind of, I have to appropriate it, I have to, come, yeah. or outdoor, uh, you represent the, all the colors in these fluorescent uh, tones. Why? It seems like a, a hand of man also in the nature or there's a motivation behind it. Um, actually, I uh, started this from the very beginning and the basic idea was uh, we, we, we live in a, in a time where like uh, artificial images, uh, printed images, uh, light images like let's say uh, screens are so dominant like, I mean yeah we probably look more like there are a lot of people that look more into screens than out of the window so I thought uh, at that time I thought wow it's so difficult to compete with all these images just with uh, uh, like a Cezanne style you know I look out of the window and I paint what I see so, and anyway, I use, if I work in the studio, I'm in a dark, like in, in my studio, there's no window, I'm only some light from the roof. <laughs> so, I use also my cell phone. I mean, if I, for example, if I want to do this, uh, this uh, typical Alpine rose, we call it in German, we call it uh, Alpenrose. I mean, I, I'm not going to go to the mountains to look at it and then I paint it. I just Google Alpenrose and I paint it. So, you know, there's this really direct uh, link also to my sources of images. And um, I think also this, um, this aesthetic of, of uh, animations uh, is really interesting to kind of imitate nature or bodies, and then uh, in an artific artificial way to kind of um, not represent reality, but represent a, a thought, represent, a, yeah, to, to kind of try that people that look at it uh, 
create their own animation. National of your paintings are super depressive and lonely. They are not together. You don't see the connection between them. They are just lonely. Yeah, I think there's a, a big uh, thing between uh, the bodies and the nature as well. Yeah, but also to show maybe that this nature, with with all this, uh, like this artificial nature that we produce. I mean, that brings me then later on to these paintings about the park. Uh, to, to our definition of nature. And we are also always have the impression that we do a park, we construct a park to go into nature, but actually it's, everything is constructed and not at all like wilderness. And um, even in, if we thaw, think through the agriculture where more and more we, there are gene, technic, uh, yeah, genes technology, you know, it goes in this direction where, where I want to show this artificiality of nature and why not with fluorescent colors because they are kind of start to glow and <laughs> live by itself. Yeah. Yeah. But also, um, I know this also the portraits of the soldiers. In your landscape, despite the background, I see other flowers, tiny, small flowers or more big. There's a symbolic means behind because it's like, it's like a, a sort of a hope inside this crisis period or? Well, I mean, at the end I have to do nice paintings and I like flowers and <laughs> it also kind of makes uh, the, um, the gap bigger between uh, the beauty and, uh, and the kind of, let's say, this. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but uh, recently, I, I, I was um, speaking with, uh, with uh, my cousin, who is an ethicist of biology. And she was saying, it's actually a really complex thing um, with, this, with this nature. For example, in the early, like when the industrialization, industrialization was, they, they did a lot of channels, you know, to get water from everywhere, especially here in this region, uh, to, to make the landscape useful because it was, a, it was mud, like mud before, like everywhere water and you couldn't really use it, mosquitoes, blah, blah, blah. So to use it for this milk industry, for Parmigiano, they would do uh, channels to control. And now, nowadays, we are more in the style, we want to renaturate it. We want to renaturate the channels. But then uh, my cousin, she told me, but you know, now it's like almost 100 years that this channel exists and some uh, bacteria, some, some plants adapted to these channels. And now the human comes again and destroys everything. So we actually redestroy natural processes because we want to do it natural. Uh, and this is a little bit the same with this park in, in Marseille. I live in Marseille. And the, it's, it's in a really poor area where you have this city and, and these big houses where everybody, like these people live. They came here for work from northern Africa. This park was, was uh, created and now no one is looking after this park and the ping pong table uh, becomes more or less, uh, I don't know, people sleep here, they do a fire. So the dog actually, is the, the <laughs> you can see these two persons are kind of unsharp and the dog is actually the only alive <laughs> being that is kind of really, uh, yeah, he's like in his dream because he loves this kind of park with humans, but still uh, he can find it. Yeah. And this, this here as well, the nature is like adapting to, uh, nature is really alive because I mean, but we see it more like, ah, oh, it's abandoned, ah, oh, we should renovate it. Yeah. So these are so like the questions I'm in, is this, is this for, <laughs> here's another like park image with this sport uh, thing that, this idea that you go in a, into a park to make sport, that, 
and then you finally you don't run in the park, you don't climb on a tree, you, you need a machine to do sport. This is also the thing. Could be a strange question, that. so why did you decide to choose sitting well, uh, the 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 choosing of color came from I don't know, an inspiration, a casualty in this case, for example. I, I wanted something dark to also have like this work out idea in the evening, but also um, the idea of the wallpaper. Because I saw some images on the internet, I think uh, especially with COVID, the um, people couldn't go out, so they would install wallpapers and then put their, their bike in front of it and then train, you know? <laughs> and this is the same idea, I mean, what? <laughs> So you have a little bit wallpaper, a little bit park, artificial park, but also some fresh air. I mean, there are even some machines, they have a propeller in front of the bike that you can, because, yeah, you don't, as it is not a real bike, you don't have air, but with the propeller, you have air. I could actually paint this one. This is <laughs> After all this uh, kind of exhibition with a lot of, like, uh, let's say, um, almost like uh, political issues and content. I wanted one wall, with a very like calm wall, with, uh, from the sport thing really into the body, really experimental, the coincidence, the line, the mistake. Uh, yeah, like, Intuitivity. I think I cannot say much more about it, but I, I wanted this like this calm moment before we go on and we are again really confronted with something like. Um, I was actually in, a, in the Guggenheim of Bilbao <laughs> uh, some years ago, and there was this beautiful show of Henri Michaud. And not uh, not the, the um, like écriture automatique and not the the rock uh, experiments. Really, the portraits and really these eyes and this water going into the paper. You maybe know these images. So this was really a, a very strong moment for me. And then I created a whole series, like a whole bunch of of works and. For this exhibition, I thought ah, I could again do something in that style to make kind of a more, to open up the exhibition again. And also something contradictory to this kind of confrontational works. So this is like this view here. And then, then we start actually to think about really the, the landscape here that you saw probably from the train, this, this flat Po Valley, Po Plain. And um, when I, I came here twice before installing the show, and what for me was kind of really uh, impressive is to see this green, all controlled uh, landscape. And then I asked uh, Sara Pincini, but what do they really do here? I mean, I just see green and then she told me, ah, it's all, uh, it's all cow, it's all about uh, milk. And then I was like, about, uh, I don't see a cow, where are they? I mean, <laughs> how can you produce so much grass and no one eats it? And then, uh, well, I, I already thought what could be the reason. And, and then uh, they brought me to the, to the farm of, uh, of, even of the Maramotti family. And, I saw this, and so I thought this was the wall for this painting, <laughs> to kind of feel yourself also in this <laughs> stable. But also I wanted to think about this uh, in another way and to show kind of these this cows, because they are present through the grass, <laughs> but you cannot see them. And so this is like the milky green kind of, the, because also the, here's a lot of, it's sometimes quite gray here, some, even sometimes so, because there's a lot of industry, you have this, uh, how do you say, uh, smog and, and humidity, yeah. 
And then I thought this was also a nice place for this pigeon to finally show a pigeon as a sculpture <laughs> and not just the <laughs> And yeah, here it's all about this, n this uh, landscapes, this, n this contradictory, maybe almost imaginary sunflowers next to these really lines. Uh, here maybe the Apennines that we visited, these little hills. And here, I don't know if you speak German, you will understand it. This, this title is Klee lässt Holstein verschwinden. Klee is this uh, clover. This is the plant, actually. And apparently they have lots of protein, so it's good to produce milk. But as you know, Paul Klee is also a, a painter that is famous for his squares. <laughs> so you see the squares here. And then suddenly you see this Holstein. Holstein is uh, this breed, uh, this really, they, this really a milk, milk producing cow that produced 70 liters per day, they told me. <laughs> so I found it nice to kind of think that the that, uh, clover, the clay, even the painter is, is, uh, is making that the, the cow disappears. So is it only like landscape in this region, or it's like a mix of different landscape? I mean, yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, as we said before, I'm 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 not a painter that like paints what he okay. sees. But the idea, I mean, this is very dominant. If you go with the train through this region, I mean, it's, it's really flat. So I, it kind of evokes things in me, and I thought it's nice to think about this landscape in this place also, like in, in this institution, because it's maybe something dominant, like something that people here are, yeah, they live in it, so why not thinking about it? <laughs> you mentioned play with the squares and then Botticelli in the earlier work. Do you like to view a lot of art historical references in your work, or is that not really a conscious? Uh, no, no, it's, I mean, it's mm. like, yeah, it's, it's conscious mm. um, and I think it, it, if you paint today, you're kind of mm. obliged to, to look at other paintings. Well, you anyway do, as I anyway do it because I love it. I mean, and I like to do these little jokes also with other painters or these little provocations. <laughs> it, 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 ça situe aussi le travail, it's, it's, it's like, uh, contextualizing the work also in a kind of uh, how you read it, I think. Well, you're more experts in this, how people read it. <laughs> There's like a clean ret clear return to figuration in contemporary painting. Was that like always very obvious to you? Yeah, to I was that? never doing abstract. abstract. In art school, I tried some, because actually I wanted to be a musician at the very beginning, <laughs> but this career didn't work. <laughs> no, at one point I was in classical music, you kind of, I felt really uh, not free, and so I started to paint, and there I was suddenly more comfortable. But uh, I love music, and I think a lot through music, so I tried to do a little bit uh, some, let's say, notations as John Cage, you know, <laughs> to do some experiments, to draw as a notation, and then some musicians' friends would, would play it, and then I redraw it. Okay. But actually, this is also very figurative, I mean, it's yeah. because it's also like, imagine music as a figure somehow. So I, I don't know, maybe we start here, because when we come from here, we see first this image. This painting actually uh, finished a few days ago because <laughs> I, uh, I brought it unfinished and I thought, ah, I probably don't show it. So, and then I, I put it here with these two other big works and it, and it was very clear that it has to be finished because I thought it gives a, a equilibrium a calibrity here. And also with the, with the theme of the cow, from a more, let's say, realistic uh, comment to, 
to landscape. Here we are again in a kind of a dreamy situation with this, with this really milk uh, producing cows and this really this man with this, it's a pieta somehow. I don't know, <laughs> shall I really interpret it now everything <laughs> or should, shall I say what I thought? I mean, yeah. Probably you will see it yourself. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the fact that the cow, the man uh, look at us and it seems like they, he want to offer the child because he have like in this position. Yeah. You know, you, it seems like this is a different uh, interpretation. What do you think when you represent these subjects? Well, for me, yeah, for me it's about milk this painting, uh, and also about the incapacity of men to, to have a really three days or two days old baby. I mean, we need milk. <laughs> and maybe also about, you can, as a man, you can have all the power of everything. You can have thousands of cows, you can have houses, you can every, have everything. But if you have a little child, it will die. It seems more fragile. Yeah, you, I mean, and it's maybe also to think about the role in family of men. I mean, they should, yeah, they can, things they can do and other things they can't. But just because they cannot do things, that doesn't mean they don't, don't have to do other things. Let's say it like this. You, s you know what I mean? <laughs> and it's what I found interesting as well is the, these cows are produced by men over generations of cows, uh, hundreds of years. Every generation they try to produce more and more milk. And these are actually really bio robots but they still have this mother instinct somehow and they kind of want to know what this creature is. They, they go there with the nose and they breathe on it. They, even if it's like completely constructed, they're, they're alive somehow. And this I found also interesting. You, cannot, uh, you cannot completely manipulate nature neither. I found a little more striking when I looked at this, how the main figure is completely removed from the capacity to take action and the way the feet, they're as if they were stuck, not like a tree, but more as if it was a rock. So super s stiff. The word isn't coming to mind, but I, it's a room that I, it kind of sh shocks you rather than like it leaves you a bit speechless in what you would like to express. Mm. I don't know if milk was the first thing. I, I just looked at that main figure. Mm. Yeah, I really wanted this Pieta imagery. And then also kind of, it's a statue, but it's a weak statue somehow. So what do you mean? Yes. Like, it's like, the, yes, I mean, it's stiff in the ground. Yeah, yeah, and what shall I do? Yeah. <laughs> What is the dog holding in the title? The title is Two Fluorescent Balls. So it's kind of a, a ball too. Yeah, I think it's it's important that like <laughs> ironic humors, yeah. but at the same time, maybe I don't know. You sh maybe we we first speak about this if you're interested, and because this I think is kind of the end of the exhibition. So um, the, here, the title is Alpen Glühn. I don't know if you know. As in German, it, it's like, it, it means like this alpen glowing, this, when the sun is uh, shining on, or in morning in, or in the evening, you, you, you've probably seen it already, and you know, the, the, this, this mountain start to burn somehow. And it's actually a kind of direct 
um, link to the Swiss uh, national hymn because it's really a nationalist uh, horrible hymn that uh, yeah, speaks about proudness of glaciers and Switzerland and God and look at the, the, the glaciers and to kind of somehow evoke as military music this, you know, this proudness of, of a country, but which is, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's uh, as if, the, if your football team makes wins and you're like, yes, we won, but yeah, I mean, it's the just, yeah, this kind of, it gives kind of this uh, emotion that you are good, but you actually didn't do anything. And uh, I imagine this uh, situation, like this, this really proud military that kind of uh, um, plays or, yeah, plays in front of this huge glacier, like this huge, uh, strong mountains, this really proud him. And then when you look closer, actually, you know, you see that actually this glacier is really melting and is really dying. And, and you can think uh, they, this Swiss military could actually do something else than just play march music in front of a dying glacier. And it's actually, um, I don't know, have you been in Switzerland and see, have you seen the mountain? It's, it's really this panorama, this most famous panorama of Swiss mountains. You have here the Tüfurspitze. This is the highest mountain of, uh, of Switzerland and also of the central Al Al Alps. Uh, and these are all really 4,000 meter high uh, um, mountains and it's the Monte Rosa Massif. And actually, on just on the other side of this mountain is Italy. It's like really like 50 meters. I mean, yeah, I, I interpret like I did what I want, but uh, but like the mount, like the situation, the the, the place is uh, is is uh, yeah. I only invented this glacier down there because I needed kind of to equilibrate the image. <laughs> and this the place where we are is the Gormer Grat. You you know maybe the Matterhorn. Uh, Il Cervino in Italian, the really beautiful mountain as the chocolate. And, um, and this will be like on the right. And you go on this place with a, with a little train. They build a train for the tourists up to more than 3,000 meters. And then you have this beautiful view on this now melting glacier. And yeah, it's also like to, to think again about the first topic to keep the, the kind of the circular parkour. Yeah. This is actually this idea came I had uh, like maybe one year ago when like the, you remember that there was this, uh, uh, this Russian intervention in, in, in the Ukraine and at the beginning, we thought, oh, it's really far. It's maybe just a small conflict. And suddenly, the Russians started to burn the fields. And for me, this was like the first moment where, where I really thought, OK, now, it's, now, now they're really serious. Because they wouldn't like destroy or kill people like directly. They really destroyed the Earth. <laughs> And it, the images we saw were so, like you remember all these cornfields, so, so, like with, with smo uh, smoke and, yeah, it, it was really strong images. And then we, we knew about all these uh, this, uh, problems in Africa because they wouldn't have enough corn and the prices went up. And so I, I thought, ah, I need to think about, uh, because landscape interested me here for this exhibition, so I thought, ah, maybe I can th think through this. And, and then I, yeah, I did this image with these helicopters, almost organic uh, libels or machines somehow, dancing around the sun. And at the same time, this domestic dog that, yeah, you, even if, uh, 
everything is in war, but you still have to walk your dog. You kind of, your life has to continue. You know? And to put this to uh, this imaginary reality with this really very straight reality together, I, th I thought it's interesting. So is the exhibition title coming from this painting? Maybe, but uh, also from, yeah, from the burning fields. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, it's actually the first time I had the title so early because I, suddenly I had this, yeah, it's actually just burning green and I, it, it says so much. And even about, you know, the, the military is in there, the alp glowing is in this somehow, uh, the, yeah, you can, you, I, th I, th I thought it's an accurate uh, title for this exhibition. And then with, when I spoke with two people about this painting, and then someone told me, yeah, but it goes further. I mean, imagine and now, like this dog is really waiting that someone is like throwing the ball, right? Or takes it and throws it again. And now wh what happens if, if it takes that ball and throws that ball? What will, the helicopters, will they still dance somehow? And then suddenly you can imagine, you know, <laughs> maybe a child can change the war, you know? Maybe it doesn't need a lot. And then, yeah, and there you have another tambour that's like, t t t yeah, and then you have another two pigeons that, that say that goodbye. <laughs> This will be the exit of the exhibition. Yeah. So I have a question. Yeah, sure. This is your first solo exhibition in Italy. Yes. Um, what What are you expecting that the Italian, like especially in the Italian context, what are you expecting in terms of like the interpretation of your work? Do you, are you what What are you feeling about? opening this body of work to the public, especially in Italy? Well, I'm really curious. Very I mean, <laughs> I, I, mean I, I, I know Italy as a, in Switzerland, we always go to Italy for holidays and more to the south than here. And, uh, and we know the like, uh, yeah, Romans and uh, church and all this. And, but I, I'm, I, th I have kind of a hope that here these kind of images are understood well because I use a really iconographic uh, built structure, really connect, like really almost religious uh, logic of, of painting, of, of images. Not that they're all religious paintings, but kind of the, uh, yeah, also the, the Renaissance. Uh, you know, this different, uh, how do you say, like foreground, mid-ground and background. Yeah, and, and, but also, the, yeah, perspectives, but kind of how I divide the space. Um, yeah, Piero della Francesca or so. Um, so I, I kind of hope that maybe the public here that is used to look to so many, uh, like, this, to use uh, to to have to know this language, how to read these paintings, that they may be also able to read these paintings. And yeah, I mean Pieta, the family, and there are lots of uh, connections to probably Italian painting tradition. Yeah. But we'll see. <laughs> I'm really curious. And it's, I mean, it's also the first time I think that I did really uh, a concept of the exhibition, kind of that it works in a parkour and there are connections, each uh, space is connected with another. Normally I just painted and then I put the painting in a space and here I really decided a really clear architecture from the, f from the first uh, moment and also with reaction to the space, with this plexi, with these pigeons. So yeah, I think, um, I learned also a lot uh, with this occasion.
because you learn also with having occasions if you just have a, a gallery uh, that is very the space is very clear you don't have so many choice to really react on it because it's a white cube you just put your paintings which is okay too because at the end the, the painting counts but I like it a lot when you, you can go further yeah. and you did mention that you didn't want people to understand it as a biographical <laughs> work so it might be an uncomfortable question <laughs> but I'm just curious to know why you made that comment how come you didn't want it to reflect on, on your past experiences uh, I think just uh, like that of the author. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I don't want to speak about myself. I, I, I want to, of course, I have to use my eyes to to say something. But I don't. I don't want to. I'm already enough present just, you know, as I'm here and uh, I don't want to speak about my life. Like, and I don't, I mean, people shouldn't think this work through my life. They should through, uh, think it through their life. You know, this mirror thing uh, that we talked uh, in, the f in the second space. I think this is a lot more interesting. I want to include people. And uh, that's, uh, I think that's also like the, really basic approach at from the very beginning to make images that at first sight they invite you know they kind of wow you have this nature and all this or here they kind of invite to look at it and maybe on the second side you see oh, oh wow there are helicopters oh there suddenly starts something confronting but yeah everybody can look at it you you can i, I hate this no i don't hate but i kind of have questions, uh, I question pieces of art that exclude like people that maybe don't go to museums or so, you know, I, th I, think, I think an exhibition should include and, and uh, I think also the best paintings that exist, they, they have so many layers, everybody can see something in it. And even you can understand it if you don't uh, intellectually uh, get all the details. necessarily come from a personal experience but from everyone it's, it's connective yeah. so I was just wondering uh, that you know it's, it's valid your experience as much as everyone else's in right. their witnessing of the destruction of the world unfortunately mm -hmm. so that's that's what I, I was thinking as well mm -hmm. but you're, you're right so, mm -hmm. it's very impressive <laughs> it's very powerful and also the large scale of the final room uh, gives you time maybe also to reflect on, on those topics. Thank you. Absolutely. In your title you call like you call everyone body. It's like Please? a uh, body a yeah. description, not like a human or a man or a woman, it's always body. It's like dehumanized kind of way of like human being, but it's dehumanized because you're calling them bodies. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, even a dog is a body, everything is a... It's the meat, I, I think, and then you, you decide yourself if it's a body or not, and if, you're, um, want, if you want to mirror yourself in it or not, but to, to keep it really neutral. Like also, um, this descriptive... Uh, way of, of calling, uh, naming my paintings is also to, as I said before, that people may, that maybe are not so used to, to see paintings, they look at it and then, okay, I see a dog, I see two helicopters, you know, and the title then, well, here, uh, two balls, let's say, I see two balls and then the, the people, okay, yeah, I see two balls. It's like a first, uh, if I would say, ah, oh, it's a Ukraine war and blah, 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 then, okay, I don't really see this, you know, but it gives like uh, a first, uh, maybe like people that are not used to look at paintings, it gives them a first security to, 
to actually, it's right what they see. <laughs> and then, then, you know, they, they see what, then they start to really be comfortable to see other things. And then, yeah. If you would say, ah, it's like a, a connotation to history, blah, 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 then people just, I don't understand this. I, I think that's a huge problem in, in, in institutions, in, um, that, the, that the art, and the, the scissors open and some, we lose a lot of people. So I think it's important to, to create complex exhibitions, but that at the same time invite everyone on its level, on their level. What do you think about that? I mean, you, that's your, I mean, you, you will be curators and uh, art critics and maybe artists, I don't know. <laughs> right? No? <laughs> or what, 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 are, what are your uh, interests and why are you where you are? <laughs> The problem with the contemporary art is that it's too much theoretical behind it. It's not so uh, many people when we need to explain their, in a guided tour, what they see, for example, the work of Paul Klee, as you mentioned mm -hmm. before, or Kandinsky or other contemporary artists, is that not simple what they see, but the meanings behind. And some people don't study before, so it's complicated to explain there because it's not simple the material, what you see, the subjects and the story behind, but also the all the theoretical backgrounds that some people don't know, so you need to explain because with their simple elements don't understand if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the difficult context of the contemporary art, I think. Yeah. And also maybe of uh, time because there are movements and maybe in 50 years uh, people don't understand what I... And here now it's kind of... We are all in this uh, situation with environment, so maybe people have an access to it, but maybe in 50 years when <laughs> everything is different. <laughs> different <thing> what? <laughs> Could I add something back towards your exhibition? Sure. So, maybe this is the emotion that I just felt, but I thought that as a closing, there's as if there was a piercing cry that you would like you were trying to convey within your images because they're full of sound but then when we're here it's apart from the sound we are creating everything's silent and when I looked at this the main thing it reminded me of was Heart of Darkness and Apocalypse Now mm -hmm. and where they're with a disturbing sound of helicopters going and going in your head and then you turn and you see this scene that from what we, we've interpreted and so now looking at it, even these figures are very ridiculous and very ironic. So in that way, did you ever think of involving uh, sound within, your, within the presentation of your art? Or was it something that you wanted people to, to think about or what they were going through? How did you see that. So you mean like like physical sound physical that I sound. would like kind of uh, put a recording or something or like I don't know that the yes, performative. Uh, maybe but also were you thinking about this idea behind the silence within so much sound in, in your paintings that was just not transmitted as a message maybe that nature is kind of crying out to us mm. but it's just not being able to mouth or not maybe not so explicit yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah I've yeah i mean here and here you can imagine sound of course i i think i i more thought about like music as a sort of alternative to to painting like in sense of creative thing, yeah. B but yeah, it, it, it's, it's like kind of right what you say. <laughs> I, can, I, I can see that, yeah. I, I never, like I thought about maybe w what would it be to, to have an actual sound in the exhibition, but I'm not so fan of that, I think. Because uh, I think images, especially nowadays, we, 
yeah, as we said at the beginning, it's, there are so many images and, and we are so used to swap images to, you know, kind of on the internet to consume so many images and it's really rare that we have the chance to, to see an image more than five seconds. So I, I think I don't want any concurrence to this. Yeah. That was, uh, that's, yeah, that's why I was a bit scared of these windows yeah, at, the very, at the beginning. Yeah. I would rather than have a new space with music and no images. <laughs> okay. But not really involving the music, but just the idea of silence and sound, theoretically, not the actual presence of it. Was it something that you carried through your work? when you were creating it or not necessarily? Maybe not so actively, but it's actually quite interesting. Yeah? Maybe I can think, think more about it. I have the impression it's not, you don't have uh, forceless sound in an image just because you have a musician or a helicopter. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? It's, it's maybe not, yeah, of course, but I don't forcefully think about. I, I don't forcefully. Uh, yeah, I don't forcefully hear music in my head just because I see a tambour. It's more about uh, intention, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I get what you mean in terms of like when you walk through the space, everything. When you enter the space, it feels a little bit silent. But you could also hear, you can hear from the images what they were in Like, you can, it's as if it's an orchestra yeah. that is not playing. Yes. Yeah, it feels that way. I definitely get what yeah. you mean. I also, that, that particular picture has this vibe. You, I don't know, in the Titanic, when, this, when the <laughs> ship was sinking, yeah. and the musicians were saying, okay, the world is sinking right now. <laughs> we're going down. We're, down. <laughs> we're going to play to the very end. So, like, I think that's what this room feels like, but in a very quiet way. Yeah. So, I, I definitely get what you mean. Yeah, yeah. It's more for the audience <laughs> than yeah. for the, the artist. Yeah, but I like your idea. It's a good input. Yeah, thank you very much. It was. Uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs>